And that's what interquartile range measures. It measures the maximum distance that typical values are from each other in non-normal data. It's usually about the middle 50%. The, how to calculate it is quartile 3 minus quartile 1. Um, a, lot, a lot of computer programs will actually calculate IQR for you, um, but occasionally you might get a computer program stat key for 1 um, calc gives you quartile 3 and quartile 1, but doesn't tell you what IQR is. So it's not really a big calculation. All you got to do is take the quartile 3 and quartile 1 that the computer gave you and subtract them, and then uh, you'll get your IQR. So on StatKey, you, you actually will need that formula. Now, what about uh, typical values? So typical values are actually, uh, we don't have to do any fancy calculation, it's already been done for us by the computer. It's called, uh, we're gonna, basically the typical values in the data set are going to be between quartile 1 and quartile 3. And if you kind of think of the distance between quartile 3 and quartile 1, that, that is the IQR. So typical values are going to be between quartile 1 and quartile 3. And again, both of these are sort of measuring sort of the middle 50% of the data when the data is in order. Remember that one of the key things about quartiles and the median, because the median is a quartile as well, is that the data values have to be in order. It's all about putting the numbers in order and looking for a certain divider that divides it up. So let's take a look at uh, quartile 1 and quartile 3 since those are, those are sort of the numbers that um, we use to um, find typical values, right? So the number that about 25% of the data values are less than is called quartile 1 or Q1. It's also referred to sometimes as the 25th percentile or P25 because about 25% of the numbers when they're in order are less than this sort of divider. Think of quartiles as like dividers. It's a divider that about 25% of the numbers are less than. Um, so if you think of, you have one quarter, like you have one quarter in your pocket, right? It's 25 cents. That's a good way to kind of remember it. Quartile 3. Quartile 3 is the number that about 75% of the data values are less than. It's also referred to as the 75th percentile or P75. Again, if I have three quarters in my pocket or three quarters in my hand, that's 75 cents, right? That's kind of a good way to remember it. So these are dividers. And these are the numbers, so we would say typical values in a non-normal data set will be between quartile 1 and quartile 3. Um, outliers. How do we get outliers in non-normal data? Uh, we do have a cutoff point, but again, we can't use the mean and standard deviation because the mean and standard deviation are not accurate anymore. So we need to use, uh, have a formula for determining outliers that is um, connected to the quartiles and the median um, and IQR, right? Well, it really actually doesn't use the median. It just uses IQR and quartile 1 and quartile 3. I kind of like to refer to this as the box and a half rule because it's really connected to something called a box plot. A box plot is really nice because it actually calculates the outliers for you. So uh, if you go to a box plot, it's really nice. Uh, it'll, you can actually get the outliers already done for you. But the cutoff point that the computers use in the box plot is the high outliers will be anything above uh, quartile 3 plus 1.5 IQR. Um, it's always 1.5. Think of it as a um, so we'll, we'll see later that that's kind of connected to like a bo the box and a half, 1.5 times IQR. And then uh, the low outliers will be anything below Q1 minus 1.5 IQR. So these are the cutoffs for the high outliers and low outliers for non-normal data. Okay? So let's look at an example. So we can kind of get, we've done a lot of definitions here and theory and things like that. But let's take a look at uh, an example. Uh, again, I just picked something, you know, very small data set that we can kind of get a handle on just to have the idea of this. So if we look at this data, um, so we have um, eight, first of all, always think about how many are the numbers in order. If you notice, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight numbers, right, we have eight numbers, um, which actually works very well for quartiles, by the way. Uh, Quartiles, think of it as quartering the data. 
There are three numbers that quarter the data, that break the data into four equal groups. That's how you want to think about quartiles. So if I was looking at this data, if you have eight numbers and you divide that into four equal groups, how many numbers would be in each group? Well, eight divided by four would be two, right? So we should have two numbers in each group. So think of it this way. These first two numbers are the bottom group, the sort of the bottom 25%. They're going to have a divider here. And then I'm going to have two numbers here and a divider. And these two numbers here and then another divider. If you notice, and then you'll have these two numbers, right? So in each group, what the, what the computer's going to be doing, this translates to if you had a thousand numbers, um, but you'll see that you have about 25% of the numbers in each group. Now I do say about 25%. In this one it's exactly 25%, but a lot, a lot of times you might get your sample size might not be easily divisible by four. So, for example, if you had 101 numbers, well, 101 numbers divided by four would be 25 remainder one, right? 101 divided by, divided by four. So the computer's going to try to put four groups of 25 together, but you do have one number left over. So it won't be exactly 25% in that case. So if we look at this now, if you notice, it didn't take four dividers. It only took three dividers to break the data into four equal groups. These dividers are called the quartiles. So this first divider right here is called quartile 1. And this divider here is quartile 2, or the median. And this one is quartile 3. Three numbers that break the data into four equal groups. So you put the numbers in order, and then you look for these dividers. Um, okay, well, what would the dividers be? Um, again, you will see sometimes in computer programs there's slight differences, like one computer program might say 7.5, and another program might say 7.48. Don't worry about it, just go with what the computer calculates. Um, but just to kind of realize that there is some discrepancy a little bit in a computer program sometimes. If we were calculating these by hand, you kind of want to think of it as, okay, well this divider is somewhere between 7 and 8. So you kind of usually you go halfway in between. So if I was looking for quartile 1, um, I might be able to guess what halfway between 7 and 8 is, right? Can you guess? If you said 7.5, you're right, yeah. But if you couldn't figure that out, what you could do is add the two numbers and then divide by 2. And you would get quartile 1 would be 7.5. So that would be our quartile 1. Same thing here. Halfway between 8.5 and 9 is um, 8.75. But if you couldn't think of that, you could do 8.5 plus 9 on a calculator and divide by 2, and you would get 8.75. So 8.75. What about this one? This one might be a little tougher, right? I don't know what 11.25, uh, halfway between these two. So again, I'll, I'll go ahead and add them. 11.25 plus 14.75, right? Um, let's see, what is that? 26, and then divide by 2. All right, so let's see, 25, this would be 26 divided by 2, so 13. That would be my quartile 3. Okay, so think of them as dividers that separate the data into four equal groups. A lot of times what you can do also is um, you find the median first, get the 8.75, and if you notice what the median does is it breaks the data into the top half of the data and the bottom half of the data. So if you notice these four numbers are sort of the bottom half, all the numbers below 8.75 is about 50% of the data, and then these four numbers are the top half of the data, and these would be, um, again, the top 50%. That's why we said the median is also called the 50th percentile. 
So it's a divider that about 50% of the numbers are less than and about 50% of the numbers are greater than. Notice that quartile 1, about 25%, two numbers out of 8 would be 25%. So 25% of the data values are less than Q1. What about Q3? Well, quartile 3, we have three groups of 25% below quartile 3, so these would be 75%. So that's why we say quartile 3 is the number that about 75% of the data values are less than. Okay? Now, um, again, for with, as with most things, we don't really calculate this stuff by hand, especially with modern big data sets. Uh, we usually have a computer program like StatCato or StatKey calculate these for us. Okay, so we'll, we'll have a video also on using, um, using uh, technology to calculate. Okay, now, we said that the, sh the spread was IQR, right? So, um, so again, IQR, let's see if we can work that out. So let's see what we got. IQR was quartile 3 minus quartile 1. So in our case, that would be 13 uh, minus 7.5, right? Which would be what? 5.5? So typical values. Typical dollar amounts spent in the store are within $5.50 of each other. We also said that typical values will be between quartile 1 and quartile 3, right? So well, quartile 1 was $7.50 and quartile 3 was $13. Okay, so now we have uh, typical values are uh, typical amount dollar amount spent in the store will be between seven dollars and fifty cents and thirteen dollars. Okay, so typical values. Now, um, what about uh, what about a our outliers? Right? How do we find our outliers? Well, again, we want to use the outlier cutoff here, right? So our outlier cutoff. Um, 